everybody, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Disco Elysium. Well, I have been wanting to play this game for quite some time. It's in It's been on my wish list, um, and, you know, I had a good friend come into the stream the other night, Meowlery, and she was asking me if I had played it, said it was great, and I said... No, I haven't played it, but I wanted to, and she so generously donated the uh, amount I needed to purchase the game, and so here it is. So thank you again, Meowlery, so much for your generosity. I am pumped to play this game. I have the uh, Final Cut version, which is fully voice acted. Now, I looked at it, and I am going to be playing um, in just regular mode. I'm not going to play um, in detective mode or hardcore mode uh, for my first time. And maybe that's a mistake. You can tell me if I should turn on detective mode or whatever. Now, let's just dive into this game and see what it's all about. I love RPGs. I have a good buddy of mine, Fading at the Edges, who also has this and recommended it. And so I've been looking forward to playing it. Let's dive in. All right. So select archetype. So I guess I can pick like what kind of a protagonist um, or I don't know if I'm an anti-hero. I don't know what I am. Um, I've seen that it looks like you're kind of a very neutral type person from some of the glimpses of the game that I got through, you know, a advertisements. But I don't know how true that is. I have to play it. So let's see, I could be a thinker, which means I'm extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts, comes up with original ideas, sensitive, very psychological, a magnetic personality but unstable, might begin to lose his mind. Physical, which means um, I'm extremely physical, I interact with the world through my his body, gets things done, but dumb as a rock. Um, I'm actually going to create my own and continue okay so i'm gonna adjust my abilities and let's see i would like to um your senses how agile you are your musculature um your sensitivity and your intellect um boy this is interesting so I'm going to say that uh, what if I put myself here where I was just like, no, what if I was more like this? So where I was like, I was smart, I was reasonable with people, and I'm weak, and I'm slow. I like it. Let's do it. Now, you should probably min-max if you're awesome, but I'm not awesome. I'm just trying it out, and <laughs> it looks really cool. I love the art style of this game. Um, there's some really psychedelic, you know, smoke and liquid oozing around, undulating behind the scenes. And then the art on these uh, signature skills is quite creepy so let's see select your signature skill the skill you select will grant a plus one bonus additionally the learning cap for every skill of the same type will be raised by plus one um okay so i guess there's skills for intelligence skills for psyche physique and motorics um let's see so what are these Logic, it says, um, wield raw intellectual power, deduce the world. So, um, I get a plus five intellect base. Info, what does this mean? Okay, here we go. Cool for analysts, pure rationalists, obviously logicians logic urges you to analyze the living daylights out of the case it enables you to piece evidence together 
Detect inconsistencies in statements and impress everyone with your astonishing conclusions. It's the bread and butter of many a detective. It's kind of like Sherlock Holmes. At high levels, logic will be able to solve even the most complicated puzzle. You will be very proud and thus susceptible to intellectual flattery for those blinded by their own brilliance often miss important clues. I like how it has a big drawback. Um, with low levels of logic, you're going to have a hard time solving even the simplest puzzle. Even if you find the pieces, good luck putting them together. That's funny. Um, encyclopedia makes you a know-it-all, turning your mind into a database of facts. Rhetoric makes you be able to debate and um, discourse, nitpick, and win. Uh, drama says it enables you to lie. Conceptualization um, to make fresh associations, delve into world concepts. Um, from John Carp's postmodernist Carpery to Revichol's arabesque architectural style Didier Dada, and even the concept of hardcore, and then, importantly, to add your own contribution and visual calculus, the laws of the state and nature. Okay. Um, I'm just going to be logical and just kind of run with pure logic and see how that goes so I'm going to say set signature boom and I'm logical and I'm these are my skills and let's go for it let's see what happens the furies are at home in the mirror it is their address. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. Okay. It's a good way to begin. Let's begin. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious from Ensini. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Okay. So, I think this is what, you know, one of the endorsements for the game that Mallory was making was that basically it's fully voice acted. Now, I don't know if this was in the original as well, um, but I love having narrators in the game when they're done well, and this voice is amazing. So, my, I guess I'm unconscious, like my ancient reptilian brain is speaking, and it's happy uh, to not have to do anything anymore. Now, either I'm, like, just kind of on the edge of death, and I'm considering just going into the light or whatever, letting go, um, or I don't know what has, is going on. That's just my speculation. Let's find out. Ever. That's ah, great. I don't have to do anything. Never, ever. Okay. So I can choose here. I can choose to simply keep on not existing, or I can um, say never, ever, ever, you know, kind of like Outcast. Um, forever, ever? Forever, ever? Yes, never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. Oh, boy. This ancient reptilian brain is quite something. I'm let's just keep on not existing. And an amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. All right, so we can just relax. There's nothing bad happening to us. No problems. All right. Um, this is great. Yes, it is. What was that about the ex something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic sauce. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. This is hysterical. Okay, so... It was just, you know, my ancient reptilian brain speaking to me. Now we're branching out, and the limbic system has been 
activated as I kind of emerge from unconsciousness. Okay. Uh, I could plunge back into the fathomless deep. There. No ball of meat. That's no right. No light in the formless nothing. Just night swimming. Yeah. How about you cough up some more of that sweet oblivion? Coming right up, sir. Smooth passy. Um, okay. Uh... <laughs> this is hysterical. I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Ah, life. Do you really? Don't be naive. Of course not. I want to sail the inky blackness until forever ends. Um, no, I, I want off. I, I don't, I mean, I'm not quite there yet. Like, I'm not... The inky blackness forever. I don't know. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why do you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Oh no. Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Hoard so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Poured what on myself? Alcohol? What did I do? I I just hit myself in the head until I passed out? Fear and apprehension. Oh. You should ask us out there first. Okay, wait. Um, now I'm getting... This is something else. Alright, Inland Empire. Easy success. Succeed. Easy versus my total of nine. Alright. Um, fear and apprehension. You should ask yourself what's out there first. Wait, I did this to myself? Tell me what's waiting for me. I don't care. I'm an idiot. A brave idiot. Um. Yes. You're one disco mother. I'm one disco mother. Um, okay. I don't really know how to take either of those words, much less the combination of those two words. So I'm going to just say what's waiting for me. There's this giant ball there. An evil ape. An evil ape so juking it out <laughs> the ball. You're yeah. one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. Ah, the earth. Evil apes. Yep. So how big is that ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. It is big. And how small are these apes? Infinitesimally small. Yeah. Very uplifting. Um, and this duking it out, I keep hearing about... What's that? Paying for resources. Yeah. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. Wow. So I gotta go beat all the other evil apes in the face. That's sad. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. What do you mean drowned? You lost. Uh-oh, I got beat in the face, huh? The sound outside. You recognize it. It's a Caprice Kanema motor carriage. Okay, it's a Caprice Kanema motor carriage. And encyclopedia, I have 11. So, I can open my eyes. Oh boy, I'm doing great. I am looking good and feeling good. Just another day in the tidy whities All right. Wow. What an interesting looking game. This art style is tremendous. 
this, I mean, it's a totally unique experience. I can zoom in and zoom out with the mouse wheel. Um, I don't have detective mode on, but some things are highlighted that I can interact with. And then when I mouse over them, the kind of detective mode turns on. Hold tab to highlight. Oh, I guess you can just turn detective mode on by just holding tab, maybe. I don't know if those are exactly the same functions, but that's great. All right, let's pick up my pants. Um, yeah, take it. Flare cut trousers. I lose a savoir faire, but I get an electrochemistry? I couldn't even begin to explain to you what that means. Um, let's open up our bag, and I've equipped some pants. Wow. Okay, good. It's good to have pants. Um, and then, let's see. What is this thing? You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. Oh, okay. Perception. Hearing. Gosh, this is a very... So, I guess... <laughs> Please bear with me as I try to f figure this out on the fly. But whenever they highlight something right here, are these skills? And I'm making some kind of check to see if I pass the skill check. Or is there some other way to understand these? Let's just figure it, it says, out. It says, whirling in rags. On the whirling in rags. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Okay. Great. I have a headache. And I live in a place, perhaps, that's called Whirling in Rags? That's bad. What's this bottle doing here? This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Good for me. What is this? What happened? Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Okay, so... I was listening to a cassette tape, and then I ripped it apart because it was awful. Um, what's this? This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Oh, okay. Interesting. Oh, there's my shoe. Um, cool. Okay, space bar is take it all. I was hoping that that was the function. All right, what is that? All right, anyway, nothing else to interact with over here. Let me go into my inventory, though. And I'm wearing shoes, and it's a green shoe, and that's all I have on. I don't even have a shoe on my other foot. That's how bad I'm doing. All right, um, is this my shirt? What is that? Or is that, like, broken the glass? The stands oh, broken okay. in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Uh, okay, so I want to assess the damage, and I'm going to use visual calculus. Um, and it's a white check, which means I can retry it. Interesting. My visual calculus is five, I believe, because it's intelligence-based skill, and my intelligence is five. And so, um, I just need to roll a d12 and add that to five and beat a nine. Is that what that means? Is this how this is functioning? I, or not a d12, I'm sorry, I get to roll 2d6, and then I add 2d6 to my base of 5 to try to beat a 9. See what happens. The shards face outward. Yep. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Okay. Did I break it with my own hands? Look at a that. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. Interesting. Um, what did this More then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Wow. Okay. I'm trying to figure out in my mind who's talking to me. Is it my visual calculus that's talking to me? Like, this skill that I have is just an inner voice that is having this dialogue with me, but it has a unique voice. I mean, this is a very... 
interesting concept. Um, I'm probably getting it wrong. That's just kind of how I'm trying to make sense of it right now. Um, assess the size of the it impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. All right, so I threw something out of the window. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Wow, so I threw my shoe out the window. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Okay. I should go and get that cool shoe. wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Oh, I got some experience. Okay, interesting. End. Uh, what is this? Here's my journal. Find your other shoe filed Monday at 8.10 in the morning. Seems like your green snake shin, snakeskin shoe is missing its partner. You should find it before you go venturing into the wild unknown. Two shoes are better than one. Unite them again. I will. Okay. Um... Uh, okay. Let's see. All right, here's my bathroom. It looks great. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh, boy. He's not walking so good. There's my shirt or jacket. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. Boy, what a time I was having. Let me get my shirt, though. There's my tie on the fan. Um, all right, take it. Nice. I got my... What did it, what did it say? Disco... Disco-ass blazer. I have a disco-ass blazer, everybody. I feel good about that. And I'm just wearing that over my bare torso? Sounds great. Now, um, it's given me this esprit de corps. And I have no idea what any of these things mean. But I'm going to see what it means. Uh, let's see. Connect to Station 41. Understand cop culture. Psyche is plus three. All right. So this helps me with being a cop. This electrochemistry means going to party planet. Love and be loved by drugs. All right. So that's there. And then sneak under their noses. Stun with immense panache. So, this means I can't be sneaky because of these pants. Oh, my gosh. This game is hysterical. All right. Well, now I understand. This is one of the reasons I really wanted to play it was because I had such a high Metacritic score, in addition to Mallory and Saint recommending it to me. But, I mean, wow. All right. Oh, here's, here's a shirt to go under the blazer. Let's get it. Take it. Now, am I wearing it? Let me look at myself. I am... This gives me conceptualization, but minus one suggestion. Understand creativity, see art in the world. Um, but then I lose a suggestion. Charm men and women, play the puppet master. <laughs> the shirt is so bad that I'm bad at charming people. Hilarious. All right. Oh, God. How do I look? A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Wow. Was this not the same Eno that founds empires and lays waste to cities? Virile, uncaring towards the little things? Um, I don't know. But I apparently succeeded in this conceptualization. Probably not, no. Now here's a question. Does this mean it rolled for me behind the scenes? And then I got a 12, and I needed to beat a 10. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base, and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself. Just the vague impression of a man. Well, well, that's fine. I mean, that's probably why I look like that in the lower left corner. I'm just a vague impression of a man. I love how I try to you know, to associate myself with the same Elon that, uh, you know, or panache that 
that founds empires. And it's like, no, it's, it was just something dumb that I did. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there underneath the soft vapor. Wow, really? Nothing? Really. All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. Okay. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. Wipe it. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Yes. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. Oh, wow. You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. All right, Inland Empire. Um, maybe I should touch it first. Make sure there's nothing wrong yeah, with my face. There is definitely something wrong with it. How bad? What's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness. Then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm sorry. Touch your there nose. You your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Um, at least my tongue is okay. Touch my tongue. It's not. It's swollen <laughs> and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Gross. Um, now I'm going to look at myself. Wipe the mirror. Oh. Sweet. I look great. Now I can see myself. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It's the face of a late stage alcoholic. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? <laughs> I'm not making it. The face is making it itself. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Uh, I don't even know where to begin with trying to understand free will, what's happening, who's in control. Um, okay. Oh, my God. You can't stop. It's like it's not even <laughs> voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. Oh, my God. Is that true? So I just walk around looking like this all the time? This is awesome. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? <laughs> I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. Um, it's insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off, too, in a sad has-been kind of way. There's some kind of charm to it. Yeah. There might have been ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. I like... It's like, who am I having this argument with? The mirror? Um, let me see. My, I have even odds... Uh, to look into the source of it. Let's see if we can get it. It belongs in the new, yes. the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. I don't even know what to begin with this understanding. The third decade of the current century? Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Oh, my God. Disco? For Revachol, your city. That meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. Okay. If it doesn't rhyme... You're not pronouncing it right. So Revachal is my city, and I'm in the 1970s? Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, what de Nuit, somewhere in Revachal West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. Wait, I'm the singer? Or no, I had... Oh, wait, so I'm just copying? Um, it's 
So I adopted it? Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. <laughs> I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it click click. That's hilarious. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features it heavily in Guillaume Lemillion's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Great. How long ago was the new? Some 20 odd years. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression looking good on you or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Unreal. So wait, now it's the 1990s and I'm a washed up disco imitator alcoholic? Um, anything else? Like who I am? Why did I, why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of disco. The rest is darkness. <laughs> Aside from the useless Great. fact that the motor carriage outside was a caprice Kanema. Um, I guess that's it, Ed. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Um. I could try to beat this. I would need to... I have a three percent chance, which means I have to roll box cars basically. Um, let's try it. It's too late, like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. That's sweet. I look great. Um. See, oh, I have to put points to open this white check. Now, I didn't understand. I thought white check meant I could, like, keep rolling it, but not until I put points. All right, well, let's leave it be. Well, that was a disaster. Um, what's this? I guess I can't open it. Um, all right. Let me go over here. Let's look at this uh, ceiling fan. Get my necktie off of it. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Wow. Uh, can I get the tie? Oh, no. Um, let's pull on the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Good. Let's see if we you can get this. And catch the tie. Wow. Snap. It's released from the blade. I got what my tie. You in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie <laughs> with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Sweet. I like it. Let's light a it terrible up. Terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. All right. The Turn them off. Are off. Leave. All right, let's see what I got. Um, I have my tie, which gives me plus one inland empire. Hunches and gut feelings. Dreams in waking life. My necktie helps with my hunches. That's good. What is this? Um, this is... Guillaume Le Millon. Temporary research bonus. What? Minus one logic, head in the clouds. Research time, four hours, 30 minutes. What? Whatever happened to him, who with his amber mane and sparkling teeth beguiled the tattered remains of the nation while you suffered and suffered, did he dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slendering new lines of some starlit boite de nuit? Twenty years ago, spare a thought for his great ass, too. Or wait, maybe he became a police officer in Revachel West. Hmm. 
Um, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm internalizing this, but I guess I am. And it's just going to take, what, four hours and 30 minutes to figure it out? All right. Well, let's close that. I don't even know what that does to internalize it, but it seems like the right thing to do. Awesome. All right, so now I need to go out here and try to, like, get my shoe. And I think we will get into that in the next episode. This is a great place to stop. I'm almost going to step outside my hellhole apartment. And I am just trying to understand this game, but I have to say that I'm loving it. I think this game is amazing. I love the style of it. It's very, very interesting. You know what it reminds me of? Um, and I know it's going to be more than this, but just right now, it, it has this feel of like the longest journey where um, I'm playing a very, very deep, well-written point-and-click adventure, but I see that there's other systems in play, some RPG stuff and some detective stuff that's going to be added on top of a traditional just, you know, point-and-click adventure, but this is just really hitting all the right buttons so far. So, again, thank you so much, Mialery, and thank you uh, all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this initial episode of Disco Elysium. We will get into more of this next time when I try to get my shoe and understand what is going on with this very, very stylized uh, and kind of surreal and macabre, hilarious game. All right, everybody. Take care.